out my loves thanks for returning i hope this video finds you happy and doing well as you know by the thumbnail this video is going to be a ranking video so if you're interested then just keep watching all right so i just decided to come on here really fast and rank all of the eyeshadow palettes that i bought in 2020 and for the most part of it all of these have been released in 2020. i see a lot of these ranking videos going around and i actually have one other i think i have one other ranking video on my channel and I'll link it up above just in case you're interested. So for some of the rankings, I'm gonna have multiple palettes. For example, I have a couple of palettes for Morphe, uh, Nabla, you know, things like that. So I'm going to group them in as one ranking. That I'm not listening to you, you're crazy. All right, so coming in at 15 are these Makeup Revolution color books. Okay, and they look like this, and they have like uh, black, purple, and a couple of other colors, okay? But I chose to get these. Now let me open, uh, I'm gonna open this one for you, cause out of the two, this one happens to be my favorite, my favorite one. So anyway, it looks like this, and then you open it up, it looks like a book. Now, what I like about this, setup is that if you um, have issues with blending and it's hard for you to you know uh, pick the colors to blend your eyeshadow really well this is really good because it has a fading effect you know it starts dark then it goes to light and it has all of these colors now in that regard I think that um, the color story is perfect I love it um, the only thing is you know you don't take the heads off properly then everything gets mixed into the batch someone gets a beak in their bucket or a mouthful of tendons and you've got a lawsuit on your hands you got a fainter down in head removal so makeup revolution even with within some of their palettes the eyeshadows can be kind of hit, hit or miss. I think that this type of eyeshadow palette could be good for beginners because you're not gonna start off with a lot of pigment and it blends okay, but the entire concept of these is really cool, but um, I'm just going to rank these as number 15. All right, so the next eyeshadow palette is by Kesha Rose, and this brand is Hip Dot. And I gotta tell you, I love the packaging. For you all that are familiar with me, you all know that I absolutely love packaging, and I like how these eyeshadows look. I think the color story is just a tad bit all over the place. And the reason this one is coming in at number 14 is because the shadows are are dry okay um, and some of the metallics are dry this palette was $36 it does have a glitter I'm not really a fan of glitter I know that uh, some people like them uh, but I just find them a little bit uh, I don't want to say hard to use it's just that when it's time to take it off I don't want to deal with all of that so I'm like mm, I don't want to use any glitters but um, I really love the packaging, you know, and I guess I'm so mesmerized by how cute and unique this packaging is. At times I could just kind of overlook uh, this, but yeah, this, these shadows are a little bit dry. And yeah, this is coming in at number 14. All right, so the next set is Morphe. And this year I ended up buying the 35C Everyday Chic Palette. And I did a video on this with a couple of looks. I link it up above just in case you want to check it out. I want to toot my own horn, honey, but beep, beep. <laughs> so I love pink and <laughs> that's why I wanted to pick up this particular palette. And to me, you're not going to get a lot of pigmentation out of their palettes. You know, I think that they would be good for beginners because it's not going to, you know, uh, allow you to get too much on your brush uh, even with the metallics you know you you have to kind of reapply dig into them I don't know if you can even tell but you know a lot of these um, eyeshadows kind of you know kind of had to dig into them but I'm not saying that they are bad eyeshadows or anything like that it just takes uh, some time to build them up same with the main event palette and here it is right here it's a fun color story great for going out out, um, things like that because you have so many glitters they had some new formulas in here that kind of remind you of a putty texture 
Um, and then down here, they have cake liners. Now I have to admit, I do pull this out. As you can see, I've really dug into the black because after I apply my eyeliner, I like to go over it with a matte black and that's what I like to use this for. So I, I like the uh, cake liners in this palette. And then for the Morphe Madison Beer Palette. So with this palette, same type of situation. You're not going to get just a whole, whole lot of pigment when you go into the mattes and the metal and the metallics, but I think the color story is great. Again, all three of these palettes, I did a video where I did a couple of looks and I'll link it up above just in case you're interested. All right, so this next one, yeah, please don't kill me. Uh, coming in at 12 are these new Juvia's Place palettes and the reason that I have them coming in so low is that uh, is the formula. The matte eyeshadows are super dry. I have this palette on right now and uh, I did dip into one of my Pat McGrath palettes and if you all know me it's hard for me to do an eyeshadow look with just one palette i have to go all over the place i have to go here there everywhere whereas some people i think most people like to just stay in one palette when doing a look but yeah i've got this pat this eyeshadow this palette on now and i use this color this color this color and this one and this one i think i, I used all of them but the glitter and I found that these uh, eyeshadows are uh, in this particular palette are dry and patchy. I don't, I don't think that they layered well. Um, and as far as the other one, let's see, same thing. You know, they just didn't layer well, and they were a little bit dry. Now, can you get the job done? Yes. Um, I bought this uh, with the kit. They came in a kit along with some. What is it? Jelly, some lip jellies, lip balms, and things like that. So I guess she's gonna sell these for like fifteen dollars. I think that these would be good at between five and ten. You know what I'm saying? But I think that the shadows are just too dry for me, and the metallics they just don't pop enough. Then you know. So anyway, these are coming in at twelve. All right. So on number eleven, I have the Elf Retro Paradise palette. Now, this has some really pretty colors. Those teal blues, that bright green, the pastel, uh, um, what is this, lavender, the golds are really, really pretty. So, with this particular palette, um, as far as the mattes are concerned, I just found them to uh, be a little bit patchy and um, kind of hard to blend. As far as the metallics and things like that, I thought that they were nice, like really nice. I used the um, Urban Decay Setting Spray. You ever tried that? It's fun. Cool. And man, that was able to really get those metallic eyeshadows to pop. You know, sometimes um, when you do add uh, a liquid, like a setting spray or whatever, uh, sometimes you can add it to some metallics and they still don't do anything. <laughs> That was a trick. No more. <laughs> like, when I come across that, I'm like, what's going on? What, what is the deal? But anyway, um, yeah, and that's why I would rank this one here. The Like the blue and the black, uh, very, very patchy. And the green, these, this, this green and this teal didn't really show up well on my skin tone. I do realize I have darker skin tone, but it just, I, I don't know. But I love the color story. It's really cute. And yeah. All right, so next coming in at number 10 is the Huda Rich palette. And if I'm not mistaken, I think these came out um, right at the beginning of the year. Here is the layout. I like it. One thing that kind of turns me off about her palettes is the price. I know what the deal is with you. You're too fine for your own good. That's what it is. Yeah, people been telling you you're so fine all your life and you starting to believe the hype. That's your problem. You got finitis. This little thing is $29. And you know, that, uh, as far as the price is concerned, that's relative, or should I say subjective, on, you know, the person and how much money they want to spend. But that's the, you know, that's the thing that really turns me off about her little palettes. Her metallics are very soft, very creamy. They pop whenever I use my um, Urban Decay setting spray. And the matte 
eyeshadows I feel as though they aren't the most pigmented um, so you are going to have to go back in you know to get the desired um, saturation but um, yeah that's about the most I can say about this one's coming in at 10 all right so the next set of palettes are the LA girl mastery palette uh, the mastery and the artistry palette now for this to be an affordable brand I I love these palettes I think that I love the price I love the packaging I love uh, the eyeshadows I love the mattes um, the metallics are a bit hard pressed well they're not a bit hard they are hard pressed so you might have to do a little digging to get them out but for what you get um, meaning the price the packaging the eyeshadows you get the big mirror I think that it's great uh, I think it'll be a great uh, palette for beginners but um, yeah i wish i had their little mini palettes they have some nine pan palettes as soon as i can find some of those at my ulta i'm gonna pick those up i will not order them because i've had some friends order from them over and over and the eyeshadows always come broken but anyway so here's another palette love the love the color story and believe it or not a lot of their um metallics are soft and creamy in this palette like this one is a soft and creamy formula um i don't know why um that palette doesn't have um a creamy formula like this one but even still it's still a nice palette either way these are coming in at number nine all right so coming in at number eight are the fenty snap eyeshadow palettes these came out at the beginning of the year and great color stories to me this one is number three this one is number four number four and this one is number what is it six number six so as far as the formula in my opinion um, it's not the most pigmented formula and I'm talking about the matte eyeshadows You're gonna need some time to build them up. So in that regard, I think that these palettes would be great for beginners um, I absolutely love the packaging. I love um, how you can buy a couple and snap them together I like the fact that it has a mirror in it, which is great for traveling But overall, I really didn't have a problem with these I do recommend that if you are going to buy these to when you use them to set your base meaning don't use a wet base you know just set it with a powder lightly set it with a powder and then go in with your um, your matte eyeshadow your metallic or whatever you're going to wear I feel as these eyeshadows just work better with a set base but either way these are still some good ones and coming in at number seven is the Too Faced Born This Way the natural nudes now i know some of you may be side eyeing me and that's okay <laughs> that's okay i did purchase i did purchase the Too faced pumpkin spice and i did not like it i'll link my video up above so you can see what i was talking about but this palette i absolutely love when i use this palette i just go ahead and set my base and i use it for when i'm going places that are a little bit more on the conservative side i can get a quick look and look well put together sometimes you know we just need or you may need or he may need or she may need sometimes we just need a palette where we can go to it's just gonna be no fuss and this is one of those palettes and I ranked it at number seven and I actually love it and I do keep it on standby because it has a gradient type of um, eyeshadow tones as you can see it has dark all the way to light and it matches the uh, the metallic to go with that so you know when I'm in a rush and let's say I want a little bit of a smoky look I can just apply this chocolate matte shade okay um, apply it on my lid and blend it out you know to where it'll have a blended effect and then on the inner part of my eye I can add the metallic shade and pretty much be finished you know you don't need you know as you all already know you don't need all these eyeshadows for one look you don't even need you just really need one you can get a really nice eyeshadow look with just one shadow you don't have to go in with all this other stuff so um, I would recommend this for that conservative uh, person that's out there that just wants a no fuss look I just need to get it 
I just need to get it and go. Get it on and go. <laughs> this would be a great palette for that. All right, so coming in at number six um, are the little mini Norvina palettes. And this one was released at the beginning of the year, volume three, and then two and one were released uh, a little bit before that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about uh, this little palette, really all of them. All right, so here's the palettes all open so you can actually see. And the way that I like to use these is with the MAC Paint Pot and it pretty much set, sets itself. And I think that these shadows really go well with that. Can you use a wet base with these? I think so. It's gonna take you a little bit more time to blend it out. So if you want your eyeshadow to be heavily pigmented and saturated, you know, just use a wet base. But every look that I've ever done with these has came has come out very pretty. Um, and I posted a lot of those on Instagram. And this yellow is really nice and the orange. Now, again, when I use this, I either use a wet base or uh, my paint uh, MAC paint pot and there's some really nice shadows to me. Now, this is another uh, set of eyeshadows that I think are overpriced, so I did wait till these go on sale, um, just because, I don't know. I'm hoping that this year during Black Friday or something like that, the bigger palettes will go on sale because if they do, then we're gonna get those too. All right, so coming in at number five are my Nabla palettes, and I have the Cutie, the little Cutie palettes the Wildberry and the Platinum. This is such an awesome formula. This is such an awesome formula. If you haven't tried Nabla, you really should. Basically, this is a cool tone and this is a warm tone palette and their formulas are unique. Um, they have a matte formula right here that is it's creamy to touch, but when it comes out, when you apply it, it looks matte. And they have other cream formula, like their uh, metallics are very creamy and apply very well. Their eyeshadows are very blendable, adorable. I love them. I wish that these would go on sale um, so I could get all of them. And I think that this is a decent price because when you go into the Morphe store, you can use Trend Moves uh, discount code, which is I think 10% and these are $24. So if you, you can knock down that price a little bit, but I love these palettes and I strongly, strongly recommend them. All right, so coming in at number four is a, a palette by Shanta Kai, and this is the Hummingbird Eye Quartet palette. This is it. Oh, look, it matches my, it goes with my shirt. But yes, I know it's really tiny, but here are the shades, and just, just so you know, this shade right here, this little, um, looks like a little tan color, it comes out deeper on my skin tone. That's just the FYI. And all of their metallics are very soft, and they're creamy, but they're a different type of creamy from, um, let's say, the other palettes that I've tried. They're just a little bit, it's hard for me to explain, but they are creamy and they, when you apply them, they have a sparkle to them. So if you were to take pictures up close, you would see uh, sparkles on your eye, not glitter, but uh, very sparkly. And it looks like uh, this palette probably wouldn't, you know, give you much of a look. I do have a video using this palette and I'll link it up above and you can check it out. Check the look out for yourself to see, you know, what you think. But this is nice. It is on the pricey side, but I think it's well worth it. And another reason why I think it's worth it for me is because it brings something unique to my collection, you know, because it's good for me. Now, I feel, I think it's good to have a, a variety variety of you know makeup ranging from affordable to high-end to luxury but this one's a really nice one it's coming in at number four all right so coming in at number three is my bejeweled eyes to hypnotize by charlotte tilbury and this is my first charlotte tilbury palette and i absolutely love it let me tell you why um, I think that the mattes are very soft, very blendable. They almost blend themselves. Now, when I use this, I do set my base and it works really well like that. I think the metallics are very blendable. And this is on a, this palette is on the pricey side, but I would recommend it 
um, at that price just because of how well they work and if you're a person who's just looking for a simple palette for every day you just want one palette um, like this roll right here could get you to work and you, you can move into these two sections right here and those could get you for an evening look and you could pair this and this because they're set up in threes so you could have this row and this row for work and then these two middle rows for going out for more of a dramatic look but you cannot go wrong with this palette in my opinion it's a uh, beginner friendly because the shadows to me almost blend themselves so remember if you do decide to get this set your base I always make sure don't use these with a wet base I wouldn't recommend it so yeah coming in at number three all right so coming in at number two are my Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes and you know I'm gonna say something that's um, what is it how, how do I say it not popular po unpopular opinion <laughs> But the green, this palette in the rose, what palette is this? The rose something. I'll put it on the screen. The, the green one that everybody likes or that most people like, I, I, and I didn't look and I didn't think that that looked the best on me. And I was so disappointed. But everything else I love. Okay, I, you know, I even love the one that shifts from a pink to a green. I just don't think it looks the best for me and that's one of the reasons why I was so attracted to it. I was like, I can get this, it's gonna look so good on me, it's gonna look so good, blah, 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 blah. And then I put it on and I'm like, mm. But anyway, love the pink, love the gold. Pat McGrath, she, her shadows can do no wrong. So this one and then this one. This is the rose, what is this? The Okay, so this is the Rose Decadence. Now, what turned me off about this one, but I still like it, is when I got it, these two shades have popped out of it and we're sitting on these two shades. And that's why I have this bad looking glue right here. It just looks horrible, but I love these shadows. I love pink. Um, I love Pat McGrath's eyeshadows. So yeah, it, it's like, to me, her eyeshadows can do no wrong. And that's subjective. Not everybody's going to feel that way. When I use her shadows, I can use uh, them with my base wet, you know, when I'm applying the mattes, or I can set it. It's just not gonna give me any problems. You know, she has her magnificent uh, specialty shades, which look good and play well with, with no matter what shadow you pick. So, yeah. All right, and then coming at number one, can you guess, can you guess number one? Natasha Denona, the bronze palette, and yes ma'am, the glam palette. I have a look during the, the glam palette. I'll link it up above just in case you're interested. But these two palettes, I know you all know what they look like. These two palettes are great for every day. And yes, a brown skin person can use these. I did, I think five looks. I'll link it up above just so you can see. These palettes are great for every day. Um, even if you wanna go out, you can still rock these palettes because it's got some deep tones in each palette where you can smoke up the outer V and look as sexy as you wanna be by the eyes. And it's just good. To me, Natasha Denona's palettes are, her eyeshadows are in these palettes. All of them, you're never gonna have a problem with blendability, layering, you're never gonna have a problem with patchiness. And as far as the metallics, they're always going to be creamy and soft and yeah, it, it's just these uh, these $65 palettes, you know, hands down, um, I, I would recommend. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my ranking of all of the palettes that I purchased in 2020. Let me know, did you pick up any of the palettes that I bought and do you disagree with the ranking or do you agree? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for tuning in and until my next video, smooches.